Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide. We're going to get started on number 9 today, which is the second part of section 4. Now it's the fill-in answers. A family of five is planning a four-day camping trip. Each person will need to bring one bottle of water for each day of the trip. If the water is sold only in three bottle packages, how many packages must the family buy for the trip? All right then. So there are lots of important numbers we need to take into account here. There are five people on the trip, on a four-day trip, and each person requires one bottle of water per day. So each person, oh, we are using the wrong color, woefully unprepared. Each person will need, since it's one bottle per day and they're each on a four-day trip alike, it'll take each person four bottles of water. Now there are five people, so the number of bottles needed for the entire family is 20. Now it says though the water is only sold in three bottle packages, so we need to divide 20 by 3 to see what we get, and that's about equal to 6.66 dot 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 or rounding it up 7 because we don't want them to have less bottles of water than they should and that's the correct answer so moving on to the next problem here number 10 is there's two matrix equations I like to call them matrices so the absolute value of 10 minus k is equal to 3, and the absolute value of k minus 5 is equal to 8. What is the value of k that satisfies both equations above? Now, from that we can say tell that k is a constant, because it's not going to change between the equations. So let's take the first equation here. By the way, there are many ways to deal with absolute value equations. This is my way of dealing with them. So it says the absolute value of 10 minus k is equal to 3 we could do it like this either 10 minus k is equal to 3 or 10 minus k is equal to negative 3 in the first equations case it will be 10 minus k is equal to 3 so minus k is equal to minus 7 or k is equal to 7 in the latter's case 10 minus k will be equal to minus 3 minus 3 minus 10 which means minus k is equal to minus 13 or just k is equal to 13 so in this case k can be equal to either 7 or 13 moving on to the next one in line this can be k minus 5 is equal to 8 or k minus 5 is equal to minus 8 so for the first equation it will be k is equal to 8 plus 5 which is equal to 13 for the second one it will be k is equal to negative 8 plus 5 which is negative 3 so as we see there's only one number in common and that's 13 and that's the correct answer because it works for both problems alike now on to number 11 let's turn the page here what is the value of x in the figure above? Okay, so they give us this angle game, as Sal likes to call it in Khan Academy, and we're going to have to find angles one step at a time to figure out what x is. So let's start with this corner here. We can see that there's a 90 degree angle adjacent to it. So we need we know that this 65 degrees plus this angle we don't know nor is it labeled will be equal to 90 degrees since line M is a straight line so 90 minus 65 is 25 alright now we can see that we have two opposite angles here this one and this one and since opposite angles are equal this is also equal to 25 now you remember that line M is a straight line because it creates 180 degree on the top. 
So it'll create 180 degree on the bottom as well. So now it's just subtraction from 180 because we have all the angles needed to add up to that number. So 180 minus 20 is 160 minus 25 is 140, 135, and that is the value of x, 135. Yeah, excuse me, moving on to the next problem. Okay, if the median of a set of nine consecutive integers is 42, what is the greatest of those ni these nine integers? And, of course, we all know what 42 is, I'm presuming. The answer to life, the universe, and everything else. That's why it's multicolored. But, let's focus on the question at hand here. 42 is the median of nine consecutive integers. So, if we name our random numbers, they would be consecutive integers, by the way, not just numbers. So, if we were to na um, use constants for our numbers that we don't know, it would be a... B, C, D, and since there's nine cons nine numbers total, there will be four on the left side, four on the right side, and the median in the middle, because the median is the middle of the group. So, 42, and then E, F, G, H, so on, so on. And since they are integers, they cannot be fractions or decimals, so they need to go at units of one, because they're consecutive integers. So, 42... 43, 44, 45, 46. 46 is the greatest integer in the set. And that's the correct answer. Um, I accidentally did number drew, drew number 14 thinking it was number 13, but since I already drew it, we'll do it in this video after number 13. So, let the function f be defined by f of x is equal to x plus 1. If 2f of p is equal to 20, what is the value of f of 3p? Okay, so let's take this equation into hand. Uh, let's just use orange. It looks bright against this very dark blue-purple. So 2f of p will be equal to 2 times p plus 1, because we are taking into account this equation right here, that f of x will be equal to x plus 1. So f of p will be equal to p plus 1. 2 f of p will be equal to 2 times p plus 1. And 2 times p plus 1 is equal to 20. So 2p plus 2 is equal to 20. 2p is equal to 18, and therefore p is equal to 9. Now we need to find the value of f of 3p. f of 3p, which we'll draw up here, will be f of um, 3 times 9, or f of 27. Now we're still using the same function here, the one right here. So, that will be 27 plus 1, which is equal to 28, which is the correct answer. And now we'll finally do number 14, the actual number 14. In the figure above, line KN is perpendicular to line JL, and line LM is perpendicular to line JL. If the lengths of line LM, L, LN, and LM are equal, what is the value of X? Okay, so here's another angle game to play, which is really fun, actually. So, it tells us that line LN and line LM are the same, and that creates a triangle between lines LN, LM, and MN. And this is then an isosceles triangle. If we can find this angle here, we can find this angle here, and automatically we'll be able to find this angle here. So we can already find the base angles. Uh, line T is a straight line. So 180 minus 125 
will be 55. And then this base angle will also be 55. Don't worry about the x there. We're not there yet. So a triangle, a triangle's angles also add up to 180. So 180 minus 110 will be equal to 70. 110 is, of course, 55 plus 55. And now you can see there's another right angle because if line LM is perpendicular to line JL, then since there's one 90 degree angle adjacent, that part will also be a 90 degree angle. So this tiny part here will be 20 degrees. That will create a right angle. And you can see triangle KLN, we already have two angles now. We have a 90 degree and a 20 degree, which is 110. So X is equal to 70. So I hope this helped you with your math preparation in the SAT, and I will see you in the next video.